rule. So an air coil uses air as a medium of exchange to remove the heat uh, or to move the heat. Uh, a water coil uses water as a uh, medium of exchange. Um, you, you hear the term water source heat pump. What is a water source heat pump? Um, well, typically, in a lot of instances, a water source heat pump has an air coil and a water coil. This is an example of a water coil. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but the water would enter here in these two. Uh, you've got an inlet and an outlet. So the water comes in, circulates through the coil, and comes out. These are refrigerant lines. You've got a, the, your liquid, uh, your refrigerant comes in here and it leaves here. Um, and it's, uh, you've got the refrigerant tubes that are actually encased inside the water tube. This is a, this is a water coil. Uh, and it's using water as a means of exchange, a medium of exchange, um, uh, to, for the refrigerant to either give up the heat or absorb heat uh, inside the coil. And that's basically the difference between the air coil and the water coil. It's not, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's not a, 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 a rocket science or anything like that. It's just it's using water as a means of exchange. Um, now, what you don't want to happen if you ever have a, um, you know, a leak inside your refrigerant tubing and that water gets inside your refrigeration system, that's bad news. You know, that can be a major, major expense. Uh, to clean that uh, moisture and that water out of your refrigeration system. So that's sort of a catastrophe if that ever happens. But this is a, a typical water coil that you would see uh, in water source heat pumps. This is a typical air coil. And it's, uh, you know, you've got your, it's encased. Uh, you can see the, uh, the thin coils inside. Uh, you got your refrigerant lines here. you got your condensate line. And of course your air blows across the coil. And your air is your medium of exchange in the air coil. Water is a medium of exchange in the water coil. Um, when it comes to heat pump, you've got some other configurations. Um, uh, some of them are not quite as popular. Uh, you've got uh, ground source heat pumps, uh, geothermal heat pumps. And what that means is um, it just pipes, uh, your, your piping through the, uh, down into the earth uh, you know, where they dig a hole and they'll put a, a series of pipes in the earth and it just, it uses the earth to absorb heat, uh, you know, or to add heat to the, the, the uh, medium of exchange, which is typically water. Uh, now, the water is what goes in and out of the coils in the ground, not refrigerant. It's, you know, you've got your refrigeration system and you've got your water coil, um, you know, at another location. So the refrigerant pipes don't go down into the ground, just the water. You know, water in, water out, and the earth is your, you know, is your medium. The water is a medium of exchange, and it uses the earth uh, to absorb the heat uh, or to add the heat. So that's how the geothermal heat pumps work. They can be really efficient. Uh, you know, there's different methods of calculating uh, the load on geothermal heat pumps. Uh, like you have so many feet of pipe, your hole has to be so big to move so many gallons of water per minute and so forth and so on. But you know, there is um, an engineering specification for doing the load calculations on the geothermal. And like I said, the geothermals are, are not quite as popular as the air-to-air -air source heat pumps. Uh, one of the reasons is, you know, if you, um, if you got a subdivision where you don't have a lot of uh, you know, you don't don't you don't have a lot of property, and you got to go out there and dig up the whole backyard to put your pipes in. You know, that's not a common scenario. Typically, your geothermal heat pumps are installed where you've got the bigger lots in the bigger area. Uh, sometimes, if there's a lake nearby, you can actually run the loops of uh, water piping inside the lake. Uh, and again, the water, uh, the body of water, acts as a, a means of heat exchange. Um, to either remove heat from the water loop or to add heat to the water loop. And that's how that works. I'm going to stop here and see if uh, any of uh, you all have any questions about heat pumps, types of heat pumps, or anything we've discussed. In that particular system, Beth, if you did have a leak inside your larger tube, then you would have to replace that whole tube, wouldn't you? Right, if you had a leak, 
and uh, water was actually getting into your refrigeration system, you know, um, you'd have to replace this coil and you'd probably have to, you know, possibly replace the compressor and, and you know, you'd have to actually do a lot to clean that moisture out of the refrigeration system because as you know, uh, moisture inside a refrigeration system is really detrimental. I mean, you know, I, I can't think of anything any worse than having moisture inside a refrigeration system. It can wreak havoc on the inside of the system. Uh, there are things you can do to take steps to, uh, you know, to dehydrate that refrigeration system. Uh, you know, with, um, and then of course you pull a good vacuum and you can add filter dryers and, uh, um, and even in some cases chemicals uh, to help remove the moisture and remove any acids that may have developed. Uh, but if you get a hole inside the, the refrigeration piping and water in the refrigerant, you know, gets mixed up, uh, that's a problem. Uh, actually, that's not a real common problem. These coils are pretty reliable. They hold up pretty good. But this is a, you know, like I said, a typical water coil. Yes, is sir. that water treated? Just flowing through them too? Is the water treated? That's a good question. And a lot of, um, in in a lot of uh, residential applications, probably not. In some commercial applications, yes, they do water treatment for the, like they'll have like a closed loop. Uh, and in that closed loop, they'll add chemicals to that water to prevent biological growth and, you know, to prevent uh, scale buildup inside the systems. So they do treat the water, um, but not always. So those systems would probably be more likely to not fail than non-treated. True. Um, yes, sir. How does this differ from a swamp cooler? A swamp cooler? Well, a swamp cooler actually uses evaporization um, to remove heat from the air. A swamp cooler, you know, blows air across a coil that has water trickling down usually. Uh, in areas where you have low humidity, the swamp cooler works really well because the, uh, the water in the cooler evaporates quickly and it removes uh, heat from the air and it sort of, you know, pro provides a cooling type. Um, um, atmosphere inside the, the structure. So that's, you know, my understanding of a swamp cooler. You know, they actually, you've got a fan and you've got a, a media, uh, if you want to call it a coil, and then you've got water that sort of trickles down that media as the air blows across it, the water evaporates, and that's where your heat removal occurs. Uh, and like I said, uh, those systems work really well in areas where you have uh, low humidity, uh, Arizona, that, that come, they have a lot of swamp coolers in, you know, in, in Arizona and in that region of the country. So that's my understanding of a, of a swamp cooler. Any other questions? Well, Carl, uh, I mean, you were talking about the popularity of the heat pump and the air source and water source. Uh, I, I imagine that calls play a great part in what people choose to Type of unit. Very much so. The cost does play a factor in what a lot of homeowners choose. And, and you know, usually uh, the more money you can spend, the more efficient system you can get. Hey, that's the way it works. Uh, sometimes you have a, a, a quick return on your investment. You know, if you install a real high efficiency unit or geothermal unit that's really efficient. Uh, and you know, um, gentlemen, we're headed toward the, an era uh, where. Um, you know, green technology is becoming really popular and, you know, saving energy. Cost of energy is going up, so a lot of manufacturers are looking at ways to, you know, manufacture more efficient systems. Uh, I will say that the, new, the newer systems you buy now uh, are much more efficient than the older units that were installed years ago. So, you know, the manufacturers, um, you know, are in manufacturing units that are a lot more efficient. I know I've had people tell me that, uh, you know, they're uh, in the summertime with their old systems, their electric bill was, you know, three, four hundred dollars a month uh, in hot weather, uh, and then they installed a new high efficiency heat pump or high, high efficiency air conditioning systems, and, you know, all of a sudden their electric bill is ninety dollars, you know, eighty dollars. Um, so it went from $300 to $80. That's a pretty substantial savings. 
So the new systems are a lot more efficient. You just got to be willing to fork all that money out up front, though. Right. That's you know, the higher the higher efficiency systems typically cost more. Um, in terms of installation types of heat pumps, you got package units and you got split systems. Um, you know, a package unit is 